All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. The Mass today, on this Wednesday, sorry, Thursday of the 13th week, in ordinary time, is offered for a special intention. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption shows us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel, as follows. Amos is plotting against you in the heart of the house of Israel. The country can no longer tolerate what he keeps saying. But this is what he says. Jeroboam is going to die by the sword and Israel go into exile far from its country. To Amos, Amaziah said, Go away, seer, get back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. We want no more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhoods of prophets, Amos replied to Am 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 Amaziah. I was a shepherd and looked after sycamores, but it was the Lord who took me from the herding of the flock, and the Lord who said, go, go prophesy to my people Israel. So listen to the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, or to no oracles against the house of Isaac. Very well, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will be forced to go on the streets, your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be parcelled out by measuring line, and you yourself die on unclean soil. And Israel will go into exile, far distant from its own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted, it gives wisdom to the simple. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, it gives light to the eyes. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. 
The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus got back in the boat, crossed the water, and came to his own town. Then some people appeared, bringing him a paralytic, stretched out on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. And at this some scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing what was in their minds, Jesus said, Why do you have such wicked thoughts in your hearts? Now which of these is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk, but to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Get up, pick up your bed, and go off home. And the man got up and went home. A feeling of awe came over the crowd when they saw this, and they praised God for giving such power to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amos is a prophet we know from the Old Testament who certainly did not um, hold back. He um, told it like it was and was very frank with the people of Israel when they needed to be told something. Uh, there are many other passages that we could quote from but, but today's uh, in the first reading is as clear as anything when uh, those in authority, the priest of Bethel and uh, all the others in authority did not want to hear Amos's message. They said, go away, get back to the land of Judah. We don't want any of your prophesying here. This is the royal sanctuary, you know. In other words, we don't need it. We're, we're holy here. We've got what we need. We don't need you. But evidently they did, because even in the face of this opposition, Amos spoke once more, telling that Israel, if it did not turn back to the Lord, would go into exile. Your wife will be forced to go on the streets, your sons and daughters will fall by the soil, fall by the sword, sorry, your land will be parceled out by measuring line, and you yourself die on unclean soil, and Israel will go into exile far distant from its own land. It wasn't what they wanted to hear, it wasn't a, a nice, a pleasant message. But they needed to hear it, to come back to their senses, to come back to God. Sometimes we have to speak very clearly and very directly because uh, people are in such a state, they are far from God and they're not moving in his ways, they're not open to his word. They are in a sense flat on their backs and need some urgent medical intervention we might say. And the example is given in the Gospel of how bad sin makes us. Not only does it send us on the wrong path, it literally paralyzes us from doing good things. So this man stretched out on the bed, the paralytic uh, physically symbolizes what spiritually sin does to us. And it needs the radical care and attention of God who alone can free us from that bondage and from that paralysis and set us free so that we, can, we are set back on our feet again, literally. And so Jesus shows that he has power to do this physically and it points towards his power 
to spiritually set the man on his feet again as he has for us and so we must turn to the Lord and ask him to set us on our feet always and to give us ears to hear what we need to hear about our own lives and to be honest about the world we see around us and its ills not in a judgmental sense judging people and souls we can never do that but judging situations and seeing where God needs to be present where he clearly is not in situations and to pray for these situations that the Lord may open hearts and minds and free people from their sins and set them back on the right path the path of salvation Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Titus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Please, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. We please to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Who is also your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Sacrament most holy, and sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks to him, be every moment mine. And sacrament most holy, and sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment mine. And sacrament most holy, and sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment mine. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.